The 1960s were liberating. At her funeral, a man told me, your mother could have been anything. She could have been a botanist. She could make anything grow. But though she spent the majority of her life as a homemaker instead, as was customary then, neither my father nor my mother so much as hinted that as a girl I had any less opportunity than men. My first job in New York City was a rebellion against my Columbia University final exams, for which I studied till 5 a.m. every day for a month. In a whiplash decision, I briefly worked as a receptionist for a high-powered East Coast agent for Ginger Rogers and other Hollywood stars. stars. That fizzled out in six weeks as I operated the complex phone lines in a slapstick manner and misidentified just who, from Las Vegas or Bel Air or Beverly Hills, to put through or not to my one-man show boss. Next, I moved to United Feature Syndicate as assistant editor for two males, complete with press pass, which lasted nine months until I asked for a raise. It required being promoted to editor. The two male editors pled in vain. This invisible company boss I never met was unmoved in his rejection of the idea of female editors. That view reflected, I thought, the job expectations for women, secretary, teacher, homemaker. Next, I reset my horizons toward landing a job as a copy editor at a publishing house. Unfazed, undaunted, I was happy to move up the ladder to this new goal. But first, I needed a break. Work would allow only a one-week holiday annually. Before such a commitment, I vowed to myself to begin my big book. So with my parents footing the bill, I set sail for France. March 1965, on deck the ocean liner SS Constitution, I looked out at the receding skyline of New York City, apprehensive to be traveling alone, but intent on walking in the footsteps of Hemingway and Faulkner in Paris. In the famous Montparnasse cafes after World War I, great artists had congregated. I knew, and when they couldn't pay their bills, they left a painting to hold the tap. I wanted the sights and smells and actual seats mingling with my DNA. Similarly, Hunter Thompson typed text by Hemingway and Fitzgerald to get the rhythm into his fingers. My hand